Hello and welcome to RetroBreeze! Onion OS 4.0 has officially released, and there hasn't been a better time to start eating onions than now. Version 4.0 comes utterly packed with amazing features and is super polished, stable, and just a joy to use. This video will be a comprehensive installation guide and overview, and the video is split into three parts. The first part will cover everything you need to install Onion OS for the very first time. This will be perfect for you if you've just got your Miu Mini and are wanting to get Onion going, and you've never used it before. If you already have a previous version of Onion OS, the second part of this video will show you how to upgrade your existing installation to the 4.0 version. Finally, part 3 will be an overview of Onion OS 4.0 how to use it, and its new features. The three parts are entirely separate, so use the timestamps to skip to the upgrade section or the overview if you want to. Alright, if you're installing Onion OS for the very first time, your tutorial starts here. The installation process is very simple, so even if you're not a tech person, you'll be able to do this too and get all the benefits of this custom OS. Firstly, you don't want to lose any of your games, saves, BIOS, or other important information during the upgrade process. So let's back up the essentials first. Insert your SD card into your computer and make a folder on your desktop called Backup. Click View, then make sure that Hidden Items is checked. Copy the following from your SD card into the backup folder. ROMs, which contains your games. Images, which contains the box art for your games. Then open the RetroArch folder, then the .RetroArch folder. Open it up, then copy the system folder into your backup folder. If you've played any games and have save data or save states, copy the saves and states folders across too. And all right, once that's done, that's all your important data backed up. Now before I go on, a note about SD cards. You should be using a reliable, name brand SD card in your Miu Mini. You should not be using the generic card that came with the device, especially when it comes to upgrading the firmware or installing Onion OS. The generic cards are prone to errors and usually fail very quickly. I highly recommend getting a SanDisk or Samsung SD card before continuing. If you do choose to stick with the stock card, just be aware that this process may be flaky or it might just not work at all. If it's not working for you and you're using the generic card, your very first troubleshooting step should be to get a reliable SD card first. Anyway, when you're ready, power on your mini, then go into settings, then device info. Look for version. It should start with 2022 0419. If it does, you're good to go. If not, you'll need to upgrade your Mini's official firmware, but we'll get to that in a minute. Also, at this point, you will probably want to take a note, or maybe a photo, of which systems are activated on your MiU Mini, because you'll have to add them again later on. Alright, so let's check that your SD card is formatted to FAT32. If you've been using the SD card in your Mini already, then you're good to go and you don't need to do anything further. If you're using a new SD card, you'll need to format it to the FAT32 file system. If your card is 32GB or less, you can do this in Windows by right-clicking the SD card in the File Explorer and clicking Format. Make sure that FAT32 is selected in the file system box and that Quick Format is checked. Click Start to format the disk. However, be aware that this will erase everything on the SD card. You've already backed up the important stuff though, so it shouldn't be a problem. If your card is over 32GB, you'll need to use a program called GUI Format to format the card to FAT32. Browse to the Ridgecrop link in the description and click on the picture to download the program. Open the program, make sure that your SD card is selected at the top, then click Start. Once it's done, you're good to continue. So if you weren't on the latest official firmware, 2022-0419, you'll need to upgrade it. Browse to the official firmware archive on Google Drive using the link in the description, and download the miumini-update.zip file. Extract the zip file into its own folder. Now, delete everything that might be on your SD card, then open the The Firmware folder, and copy the miu 283 fwimage folder to the root of your SD card. Now, open the tfcard01 folder, and copy all of those folders onto the SD card as well. With your Miu Mini plugged into a power source that is not a PC, so basically make sure it's in a power outlet, reinsert the SD card into your Mini and power it on. You'll see this firmware upgrade screen. This can take several minutes to complete, and you want to leave the Miu Mini completely alone during the upgrade. Do not press any buttons, do not move it around, do not mess with your Mini until this is complete or you run the risk of bricking it. Just leave it alone, and once it returns to the charging screen, the update is complete. However, don't turn on the Mini yet. Instead, you need to insert the SD card back into your PC and delete the MiU283 firmware file first. Finally, reinsert the SD card, power on the Mini, and check that the version number now starts with 2022-0419. And with all that out of the way, you're finally ready to install Onion OS. 
Browse to the releases page using the link in the description and download the archive. Drag and drop all the contents of the zip file onto your SD card. You can merge any folders and overwrite anything if you're prompted. Insert the SD card back into your mini and power it on. Onion OS will begin installing all by itself. This can take several minutes depending on the SD card, so just sit by and let it do its thing. Eventually, you'll be brought to a few notice screens. Press A to proceed through them, but do read the information, especially the hotkey section. Finally, you'll be brought to the package manager. This is like an installer for consoles and apps on your mini. The first list is the console list. Go down the list and activate all the systems that you want. If you wrote down or took a photo of your systems from before, you can reference that and add the ones that you need. I also highly recommend activating the ports collection as well. I have plenty of videos about ports on the MiU Mini, so after you're done with this, you can go and watch those to learn how to play even more games, including things like Diablo, Doom, and others. When you're done with the consoles, press right and go to apps. I recommend activating all of them except for Expert, Game Switcher, and Terminal. You can use the X button to toggle everything on the current menu. If you want to enable any experimental emulators, you can press right again and toggle whichever you want. When you're ready, you can press start to continue and then wait for the installation to complete. Again, this can take several minutes, so just leave it alone. And when you're prompted, press any button to turn off the mini. After you do press the A button, it might take a minute or so to actually power off, so just be patient. All right, once it's off, it's time to re-add your backed up data onto the SD card. Pay attention because some of this stuff goes into different places than it was at before. Insert the SD card into your PC, then open your backup folder from earlier. Drag the ROMs folder over, merging and overwriting anything if prompted. Open the system folder of your backup folder and copy all of the contents in there onto the SD card's BIOS folder. Then open your SD card's saves folder, then the current profile folder, and copy over the backed up saves and states folders, again overwriting if prompted. Now we need to open the backed up images folder. This one can be a real pain, I'm gonna be honest. Onion OS looks for your box art images in a folder named images inside each folder within the ROMs folder. Open the SD card ROMs folder and it will look very similar to the backed up images folder. You'll want to go through each folder in the ROMs folder, copy over the corresponding images folder, and then rename that folder to IMGS. For example, I have a ROM folder named MD for Mega Drive. I'll open that folder, then I'll copy over the MD folder from the backed up images folder. Finally, I'll rename that MD folder to IMGS. Now we'll be able to see the box art in the game list. Just repeat the copy rename process for each system. I know, I know, it's kind of a pain. If you don't want to bother with this, I recommend checking out my box art tutorial video in which you'll learn how to use a software called Scraper to download and copy over all of your box art automatically for your entire collection. It might actually be easier and quicker to do that. All right, that's it. Reinsert your SD card and power on your mini. On the main screen, highlight games and press the select button. Then press A on refresh all ROMs. You now have your shiny new Onion OS installation good to go, and you can now skip to the final part of this video using the timestamp to learn more about how to use Onion OS. If you're coming from a previous version of Onion and you want to upgrade, your tutorial starts here. It's a very easy and simple process thanks to the new Onion OS installer. By the way, you can back up your games, BIOS and saves before doing this process if you want to, but doing so is not absolutely necessary, and your own content will not be affected in any way during the installation. Insert your SD card into your computer, then browse to the Onion 4.0 release page. Download the zip file and copy its contents onto your SD card, merging and overwriting any folders and files when prompted. Don't worry, this isn't going to overwrite any of your ROMs, BIOS, or any other content, so just merge and overwrite when prompted. When the copy is complete, reinsert your SD card and power on your mini. You'll be greeted by the Onion installer with three options. Update is what most people are going to want to use. This will go through the update process and then reboot your mini. It just takes a few minutes and there's no further input required on your side. After the installation, you'll be back on the Onion home screen with everything just as you left it. You will want to go into Apps and then Package Manager to enable new features like tweaks and search. The other option on the installer is Fresh Install. This will erase all of your settings and customizations and install Onion 4 as if it were brand new. It will still not, however, touch or delete any of your own content like games, BIOS, themes, etc. It simply resets your Onion settings. After the initial installation, you'll be taken to the package manager where you can activate your systems and apps again like usual. I recommend activating all of the apps except for Expert, Game Switcher, and Terminal. If you want to enable experimental emulators, press right again and toggle whichever you want. When you're ready, you can press start to continue, then wait for the installation to complete. Again, this can take several minutes. 
When prompted, press any button to turn off the mini, and when you boot back up, your shiny new Onion OS will be there with all of your games and such intact. By the way, one time during my testing, after installation, the mini booted to a black screen. I'm not 100% sure why, but I believe this might happen if Onion is installed whilst a USB cable is plugged in. I'm not 100% sure though. If it happens to you, just copy over the temp underscore update folder again from the Onion zip file and start the process from scratch. This only happened to me once and just redoing the installer fixed everything. However, I kind of recommend not having the mini plugged into a power source during the installation process. Just make sure it has plenty of battery available. Now that you've upgraded your mini to Onion 4.0, you'll probably want to look around and explore your new system. The best place to learn about your Miu Mini is on the official Onion wiki, which I've linked in the description box below. There you'll find everything you need to use the OS effectively. For now though, let's take a general look at how to use Onion OS. From the main menu, the games icon will take you to a list of consoles. Inside each of the console entries is a list of games for that console. You can tap right on the game list to see a different interface with one game at a time. If you don't see any games or games that you added to your SD card aren't displayed, you can back out to the system list or the main menu, then press select or long press the function button to refresh all of your ROMs. That should get all your games to show up. With a game highlighted, you can press select to bring up the context menu, where you can launch, delete, or add the game to your favorites list. You can find your favorites list as the first item in the main menu. Now let's talk about the game switcher, which is the central user interface of the Onion and the one that you'll probably be using the most. You can launch the game switcher anywhere with a single press of the function button. The game switcher will show a screenshot from your most recent game. Then you can use the left and right buttons to scroll through your recently played games, then press A to jump right back into the selected game. You'll go exactly to where you were when you exited the game last time. See here how I can jump between Sonic, Kirby, and even a PS1 game almost instantly, and my progress is saved and loaded every time. You can use the Y button to hide the button guide and get a more full screen screenshot, or you can press X to delete the selected game from the game switcher. This won't delete the game itself or your save file though. You can also press the select button to view your playtime on the currently selected game. If you're playing a game and you shut down the mini by holding the power button, you'll be jumped right back into the most recent game automatically when you power it back on. You can continue using the game switcher even after you restart the console. With the game switcher open, you can press the B button to go back to the main menu. Alright, now let's talk about the apps list. The apps list will show your installed apps, and the first one is usually the package manager, which lets you add new consoles and apps to your mini. You'd go here if you wanted to, say, activate the GBA system if you didn't have it there before. You can press left and right to change tabs between consoles, apps, and experimental, and press start to save your changes. If you've just upgraded from a previous version of Onion OS, make sure to take a look in here for any new apps and consoles. A new app in Onion 4.0 is the Tweaks app. This app lets you customize Onion OS specifically to your liking. Don't like the game switcher? You can disable it here. Want to change what the buttons do in each menu? You can do that here as well. I won't go over absolutely everything here, but just poke around and if you mess something up, just go into advanced and then reset settings to reset any tweaks that you've made. You can also go into user interface to activate the expert mode, which will make experimental systems show up on the main menu if you have any enabled. Two more important features are the search and the themes app. Themes, as the name may imply, lets you change your mini's active theme. You can get new community created themes on the official theme repository, which I've linked in the description box. Simply download a theme, copy it into the themes folder, and you'll now be able to apply it from the themes app. Search is a brand new feature to Onion 4.0. Simply open the app and then use the on-screen keyboard to enter your search term. Press start to search all of your console. You'll be given a list of systems containing a game with the search term in its title. For example, I can search Kirby, then select all systems to see every game on my mini that has Kirby in the title across all of my consoles. You can access search through the apps list or you can just go into the consoles menu and find it in there. 
By the way, you have to have viewed each system's game list at least once in order for the search feature to work. So go into games, then open each console one by one to make it searchable. You only need to do this once though. There are more apps in here that I'll let you explore by yourself, but here's an overview of a few of them. Activity Tracker shows which games you've been playing and for how long. File Explorer is a two-tab file explorer which is great for tinkerers. Guest Mode lets you hand the mini to another user without them messing up your saves. Clock lets you set the time, but be aware that the mini does not have an onboard clock. Every time you reboot, the mini will jump ahead four hours, although this can be changed in the Tweaks app. The clock is mostly used to simulate the passage of time for games that require it. For example, some Pokemon games. In the settings menu, you can change the brightness, color balance, language, menu volume, sleep timer, and you can view information about your device like the current firmware version. One last thing to cover, very briefly, is RetroArch. RetroArch is the name of the software that runs almost all of the games on your Mini, through the use of emulator cores. You don't really need to know too much about how to use it, but it is a good idea to become at least a bit familiar with it. Whilst in a game, hold the function button and tap select to bring up the RetroArch menu. Here you'll be able to change various settings for your games and also remap the controls to your liking. Core Options contains various settings for the currently running core. For example, here's Mega Drive. There are plenty of settings to tweak in here. Something you may want to do, for example, is change between a 3 and 6 button control pad, which you can do in the input settings. For PS1, there's a whole bunch of settings that really help you tweak your experience. Really, it's impossible and kind of unnecessary to go through every setting, but just be aware that this menu exists. The Mini does an extremely good job with default settings, so you probably won't need to change much or anything for most systems. It does become a little more important for things like Neo Geo, Arcade, etc. If you make any changes, go back, then go to Overrides, and use Save Core Overrides to save the setting for all the games on that console. Or Save Game Overrides to save it just for the game that you're currently playing. You can go into Input, then Port 1 Controls to remap your controls. Pressing A on a control will bring up the list of buttons to remap the selected button to. Once you've made any changes, click Manage Remap File, then save the remap file either for the game or the core. For PS1 games that have multiple discs, you can go into Disk Control to eject the current disc and load a new one. Oh, and one more thing about RetroArch. If you ever find yourself stuck in a game and unable to quit, you can come into this RetroArch menu here and use Quit RetroArch as kind of a force quit. It should get you back out to the Miu Mini's main menu. Alright, that brings this video to a close. Feel free to ask any questions you may have using the comments box below. A huge thanks goes out to the Onion team for this incredible release, and I hope you enjoy Onion OS 4.0 as well. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. I have a boatload of Miu Mini tutorials available on my channel, so go ahead and check those out as well if you want to. If you'd like to support my channel even further, there's some information in the description box of how you can do that as well. And that's it for me this time. This has been Shem from RetroBreeze. I hope you have fun on your Miu Mini Onion OS 4.0, and I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon.